Hi everybody, Paul Browning here, shooting the other half of the video that goes along with the previous RVPR or Roundtree Voice Phenomena Recorder video. And what this one entails is configuring your Tascam DR40 digital audio recorder. Now, one of the first things that you're going to have to do with this is set the external input slide switch to the proper position before you ever turn the unit on. Now, if, if you're, you're looking at the screen, you notice that this unit is actually not connected to the previous build that we just did. I just disconnected it for the sake of uh, being able to show you everything without having to try and turn and twist and show things while they're still connected. Of course, you could do this yourself and uh, follow along exactly just using the handheld audio unit and uh, it'd probably be faster and easier anyway. But any, uh, to, to move along here, uh, what you want to do, as I was saying a little earlier, is turn to the left side of the unit. and get this around here so you can see it a lot better. There's a switch. It's right here. It's the external input switch. And what you want to do is slide it so that it's at the central or mic setting. If you are not in that setting and you connect your microphones, uh, and, and let's say that that setting is to the far right if you're uh, looking at it correctly or I guess the, the bottom setting if you're looking at the video it says uh, mic plus phantom that's actually phantom power that's supplied for condenser microphones and being as you are using dynamic microphones in there you could either damage the microphones the recording unit or possibly both so do not power your unit on unless that setting is in the actual uh, central position that displays or actually just says mic only okay very important make sure you do that first okay we now that we've got the external input switch in the proper position it's now safe to turn on the unit so we're going to hold down the home button here and the unit comes to life we'll get a display time of about five seconds you'll see the main screen there it'll time out disappear so now we're ready to set up the next thing which actually will be a system reset what we're going to do is we're going to make this unit fall back into default settings just as if you'd never touched the unit ever and what that does is it puts us all on the same page and minimizes the number of changes we'll have to make to get this unit up into the proper setting okay so what we want to do is reach down and you know if you know anything about navigating through your menus and such you should know all these these keys already but I'll tell you as I'm pressing them, okay, on the main, uh, the main button here to start off with is menu. We've got several different settings. You're going to scroll down. You're going to go to others, hit enter. Go all the way down until you get to system, hit enter. Then you're going to scroll down again until you get to initialize. Then you're going to go to the right and you're going to hit that enter button. We're going to hit that enter button one more time and we are we have just successfully reset the unit. So that's a great place to start. Now when it comes to the menu settings in general like what we just did, there's really only a couple minor things that you could do if you wanted to. Um, otherwise I really, I'd, I'd, there's not many that I would change at all and this is kind of optional for you. But let's go back in under menu and I'll show them to you. I'm going to scroll, I'm sorry I'm going to hit menu one more time scroll up to record settings okay we'll go in there now where it says size that says two gigs that's going to give you recording time of three hour and 22 minutes per file that you're recording I don't like that that's too big when I work with my audio I want them in smaller chunks or smaller bytes so what I suggest is that we change that so we just move over to it and for me personally, I drop them down to about 5, 12 megs, which will give me about 50 minutes. That's close to an hour. That's pretty good. It's a lot less to, to try and wait for uh, load ups when you're using Audacity, you know, when you want to review everything. And uh, it just makes things go much more smoother. It's a lot less wait time, a lot less rendering when you're going through everything. Okay, so that's the setting that I use. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll hit the home button. That'll get us all the way back out. Okay, and literally that's all we have to set up under the menu settings. Okay, all right, 
What we want to do next is set this unit up into a four channel recording mode. And we do that using this recording mode button right here. Okay. We're going to tap that. And you'll see where it says stereo. We're going to go over to it. And we're going to go up one, up again, until it says four channel. Everything is set for you automatically. You don't need it. You're done. Tap the home key. Now, you just set up the recording mode. Nothing to it. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're probably about over 50% of the way to setting this whole thing up. Now, the next thing we got to work on are the mixer settings. We've got to make sure that all the audio is going into the proper channels. Okay? So again, down on the front, just uh, push the mixer button, and you'll see a lot of different digital dial switches in there. And this top row, you'll see me scrolling back and forth over them. What that is, is that is a value represented in the corner here. It says zero. We want those to all be zero. They all need to be zeroed out. And what that, that send word is up there actually pertains to effects. And we've turned our effects off through our settings in default. So we're not using effects. So if any of yours, by chance, are not set to zero, you need to set them to zero. And all you do is just enter in, and it'll, it'll give you a drop-down box. And then you can use the plus and minus you know, to put them all the way down to zero. And when you're done with it, hit enter. And then you can move over to the next one, hit enter on it, and work you work your way across till you get all of them done, okay? Now, the second row, these are our panning knobs. And this is the most important row that I've got. And we want to set each one of these so that the uh, individual channels of audio are going into their own tracks by themselves. And we do that, I'll bring the display up here, by changing that value. Notice this one says L12, okay? Make the first one L12. You know, and again, you use the up and down arrows to change back and forth here, make it L12. The next one, make sure I get that right there. Okay, the next one, you wanna make R12. See how it says R12 there? So again, you'd go in and set it accordingly. Uh, then you go to the next one, that's gonna be again L12. Hit enter. Fix it accordingly. Hit enter again. Move over to the next one. Enter again. This one's going to be R12. Okay. I've got mine set up already. I should have taken it off there to show you how to do it, but that's just the way mine was set up. It's a little easier. The last thing we need to do on the mixer page is go down here to level. And that's actually a volume level. And just for the sake of you know my own settings, I've maxed these out at 100 each. So it's just a matter of going in just like all the others changing the values until you get all the way up to a hundred go to the next one do the same thing the next one do the same thing and the next one the same thing when you when you get done with all those settings you'll hit home and it'll get you out of there and you've just successfully set up the mixer settings now the last part is a little tricky yeah, you gotta you gotta be kinda fast but I'll show you what I'm talking about here. What we're going to do is we're going to set the level settings for each set of mics. Okay? You'll see a button here. It's labeled 1, 2. Another button here. It's labeled 3, 4. Those are your, your sets of mics. Okay? And uh, basically, uh, the one we've got it set up where 1 and 2 are the condenser, and 3 and 4 are going to be the dynamic microphones. Okay, now to set them up, what we're going to do is we're going to set the, uh, the condensers up to 60%. Then we're going to set the dynamics up to 85%. And this is how you do it. It's a little tricky because if you don't pay attention, you could miss this and it gets a little aggravating. Okay, now I'm going to show you ahead of time. There's a button we're going to be using on the side. It's called input level. It's a rocker switch. There it is. You got a plus and a minus side. It's a little rocker switch, and you're going to adjust it using that. Okay. Now, let me make sure I got this where you can see it fairly good. Okay. So we're going to set up the first one. The first set one and two is going to go to 60. What you do is you tap the one two, and you'll see a little amount right underneath there. It says zero all the way at the end of it. Okay. And what you have to do. Just tap that button, and while it's live, then you've got to use your adjustment buttons on the side so that you can get that adjusted properly. <laughs> and it's a little hard being as I'm doing this kind of awkward. You see it kind of climbing up there a little bit. 
See, it's already up to 20. And again, we're going to set it up to 60. Ta-da! Whoops. There we go. 60. All right. Everything will time out again. Everything will be kind of uh, back to where we were before. Now what we want to do is set the other one up. Okay, we're going to set the uh, dynamic microphone. So we got to tap that and then use that rocker switch on the side and hold it down until we get up to 85. Here's 50. There's 85. Okay? And when that light goes out, everything's going back to normal. You've got your default screen. Congratulations, you have just set up your Tascam DR40. Now, what I, what I want you to do, just to make sure everything's looking good and we're all on the same page, I want you to tap the record button one time. It's going to blink. It'll be in a standby mode. But you'll see all these displays. Okay? Now, I don't know if you noticed that or not, but on the right side, it's a little hard to see with the lighting, there are three settings. Uh, one will be, let's see here, low cut, off, and effect. Let me see if I can get that to come up again. Hit stop and then tap it again. Yeah, you can see it. Low cut, off, and effect. Those all need to look just like you're seeing right now. What that means is they've all been turned off, and that's important. Okay? Because we don't want effects to interfere with anything. We don't want low cut because it's going to knock off the low end of our audio. We don't need that. And the off portion is just showing us that uh, the automatic built-in level setting is turned off as well, that we're on manual and that our settings are going to be what we're using, the ones that we set for the uh, microphones. Okay, let me hit stop again there. The last thing I really have to say about this microphone is that you have to remember that in order to record, you're going to have to tap that record button twice. The first time it'll start blinking and that puts it in standby mode where you can look at all the data on there and make sure that everything's set the way you need to before you hit the record button again and begin actually recording. It kind of kind of helps people make sure that they're they're getting what they want and that their unit is set up properly the way they want before they start using it. Okay? So, uh, at this point, you're ready to go ahead, turn the unit off. Disconnect it, reconnect your uh, our VPR back up, and uh, build it just according to the previous video that you saw, and you're ready to get out there and start recording some audio. Okay? Another thing to remember is, if you don't know by now, when you're recording this audio, every time that you record, it is building two files. One of them is going to be labeled on the end of it as 1-2, and the other is going to be 3-4. There's two files, and in one set of those files... Uh, is actually one actual recording. So each time you record, it's going to make a set of files. You'll have to load both of those files into your Audacity software so that you can then make your comparisons to look for the differences between the wave patterns and try and find some of these EVPs, these very elusive EVPs. Okay? And I think that's about all I got to say about that. If you get a chance, uh, stop by David Roundtree's Spirit page on Facebook. Join us if you'd like. My name is Paul Browning. All right, everybody. We will see you later.